Roswell Flight Test Crew here at Exponential 2022 in Orlando, Florida. And I'm talking to Bobby Sakaki over here at the Ascent Aerosystems booth. How you doing, Bobby? Doing great. How about yourself? I'm doing good. Thanks. Thanks. So I was walking by your booth and I saw that you've got these sort of vertically aligned coaxial style drones. What's the thinking here? Yeah, so they're actually, the coaxial design has been in use for many years, starting with like helicopters. But it's, it's actually one of the most proven designs in aerospace. Our unique design actually gives us more efficiency and better payload capacity than multi-rotors, all with the smaller form factor. So, uh, and we, on top of that, our unique design is fully modular. So you got payloads on top, payloads on bottom. What drew me to you guys specifically, I was walking by and, and some of your colleagues were assembling these things like Lego bricks, but it's a flying drone. Yeah, exactly. So this is the core of the aircraft, essentially. Uh -huh. um, it weighs around just over, you know, six pounds. Uh, and then everything else on top of that is just payload weight. So we have a maximum takeoff weight of uh, about 15 pounds, payload capacity about six and a half pounds. The whole aircraft span in the United States, including the batteries. Um, but our batteries, so you can use one or two, so they can be top mounted or, or not. And, it's, and they attach using the same like click ring methodology. So battery on top, and then you have, you know, you line things here. Clip that, that's a GPS. And then at the bottom, same methodology. Okay, so what about payloads? Well, you have a number of different payload options. Our payloads are so modular that they don't have to just be a sensor. The modular design actually supports almost any payload you want. We have this thing called a payload development kit. It, it's about uh, a little over a thousand bucks. And we customize a PCB to work with a payload of your choosing. And then we use this, these standard integration ports here to attach to the bottom of the drone. So um, what is nice is that we offer dozens of options with that, you know, the paradox of choice. It can add a little challenge for customers, but many customers have a very specific use case with a special payload in mind. We can get that integrated. What's also nice is the payloads integrate on top or on bottom. So you can have dual payload support. You can have an operator fly the drone while another operator interacts with the payloads themselves. You can have two payloads being interacted, uh, operated independently while the drone flies autonomously. It's IP56 rated, so it can fly in winds of over 40 miles an hour, but also in rain, sleet, hail, heavy rain, snow. Um, I would compare this in terms of capabilities to an M300. Not the same user experience, but the same ruggedization, flight time, it also is one of the only there's platforms that are able to support like a top mounted payload, so you can do like vertical inspection looking upward. Yeah, so the Spirit's been around for a couple of years. It was birthed out of um, a, pro a project that the founders had started initially through a Kickstarter project. Um, and it was fully funded. It took a couple of years to, to ship all the units, but every single customer received their platform. Um, and really, we've had different iterations of that form factor. So we've, we've made some a little bit bigger for certain customers to carry certain payloads that we're not familiar with. We've made it a much larger, a much larger variant. As you see, this what we actually announced here at AVSI is the NX30, which is primarily made for material transport. Um, that thing carries between seven and a half to like 15 pounds. You can carry seven and a half pounds for 50 minutes plus. Uh, it has a service. Uh, op service operational range of like 1,800 square miles. So it can fly twice as far as Google Wings range and back with more battery to spare. Um, so uh, the form factor really lends itself to this because there's, there's not as much drag as, a, as a, like a multi-copter. Well, now let me ask you, and I, I understand there's going to be immense variation here, but sort of on your smaller unit here, the, the one that you know, a civilian or a civilian agency might be more likely to buy. What's it cost? What's the flight time? You can fly with either one or two batteries, but like with, with two batteries, you're getting almost 40 minutes, just under 40 minutes. Um, the price without the payload, because it can be dependent, uh, in 12 and a half, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000. And then plus the payload, you know, it can go up to six figures, depending on what, the, I mean, civilians wouldn't be using that, but there's special payloads that, increase the price dramatically. and Special the, payloads for special users. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, there's certain applications, I mean, that we probably don't talk about. Um, and we built these, you can, you know, it, it speaks for itself. It can be tube launched, for example, on the move. You see the video here, like, it is launched from a number of different vehicles via a tube to either, do, like, intercept another drone. We, we, we have a counter EOS application, a partner, Dynetics, that uses it for that. Um, it's been used as a loader ammunition uh, by other customers and, and, and partners. Um, 
And because again, the same property is, it has a high payload capacity, it has high wind resistance, it can fly in any condition. It's got to, you know, drones are really only as effective as the conditions that you can operate them in. So the more conditions you can operate them in, the more usability, versatility, more, op more opportunities to make money in a commercial application. Um, so as I was saying, the, the modularity, you can use, so it works with the Herelink, it works with Blue UAS supported GCSs, anything that can talk Mavlink, this thing can work with. All right. Well, thank you so much for the rundown. It's an amazing piece of technology, and I, I love the form factor, but, but what really took my breath away is the modularity of the whole thing. That is cool. It is wild. I know. I mean, it, it, it's nice to see this type of functionality coming stateside. Not just us, but all, all of the folks at the show. Really, I, I feel like the gap, we're still there from the Chinese products, but we're, the gap is closing. And ultimately, like the usability and the security is, is still pretty far ahead. Absolutely. All right. Well, Bobby, thanks so much. Thanks so much. I appreciate you. <laughs> All you. right. And from the AUVSI Exponential Show in Orlando, Florida, this is the Roswell Flight Desk Crew signing off. Yeah.